This is a boring photo from an old phone of some storm clouds that I took in some random parking lot. This is that same photo transformed into like a pseudo 3D storm with a camera move. And how, how, did, how is it done? How is it done? It's all about displacement maps. If you'd like the dry explanation of what the effect is doing, I'm going to take a moment with uh, this grid here to explain that. But if you don't want to sit through that and you want to get right into the clouds, here is the timestamp you should jump to. Okay, so this grid layer, you see there are two layers in my comps. The grid layer um, has a displacement map effect applied to it. And as you can see here, we have several parameters that we have control over, and it's good to know basically what they do. This first drop down here just tells you which image, which layer do you want to pull image information from? And these two drop downs, the one that says red and green, they determine what kind of information you're pulling from that image. So let's take a look at what we've got here. The second layer, I went ahead, I made it, I, I grabbed a solid, a white solid, applied a gradient to it, a radial gradient, black to white. And so I want my grid to pull image information from that gradient. And I want it to pull the luminance from the gradient. So the effect is now recognizing that we have black pixels here, various shades of gray out to white pixels. Okay, and now these sliders here, as you can see, there is an effect of some sort happening uh, according to this value. I could just use the anchor point or position sliders to make this sort of transform. So what's the big deal here? I've forgotten to do something important, and that is th I, I have neglected this drop down over here, which is source versus effects and masks. So this is saying, are we going to be referring to the image source of the gradient layer, which is just a plain white solid, or are we going to refer to the effects of the gradient? So I want to refer to the effect, and we're already seeing a, some difference here. I'm going to displace pixels horizontally. Okay, now we're starting to see some really fun action. We're seeing like a bulge. It looks like there's a, like a ball trying to poke through a mesh. And that is exactly the illusion that we we're looking for. I'm going to zero out these values. So what is happening is that where the gradient is black, where, where this has black pixels, that information, those, the pixels that are in the same space, are being moved according to the slider here. Now I'm going to disable this and go to this uh, kind of neater one that I made earlier. It's the same effect. I just have specific uh, keyframes set here. So if you watch this little intersection of the grid here in the center, it'll move down and to the right exactly 50 pixels in each direction. This, this grid is set up to be 50 pixels wide. So the black pixels in the middle move down and to the right. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And you see that the values are 50 and 50. So the black pixels will move to the right according to the displacement, the max displacement value. And they'll move down according to the, to the maximum displacement value. Meanwhile, white pixels out on the edges have the inverse movement. You'll see that they are moving, they move to the left as this number increases and up as this number increases. So once you have a handle on that information, you will be able to predict the movement of an image based on the, uh, the image that's providing the displacement information. The, black, the pure black pixels will move exactly 50 pixels in each direction. The purely white pixels will move exactly 50 pixels in the opposite direction, and the gray pixels in between will move proportionally, you know, 45 pixels, 35 pixels, etc. And it's that fall off, that fall off is a key to maintaining a smooth warping image. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I were to take this gradient and apply a levels effect to it and just crush the heck out of these values so there is no more fall off or there's very little fall off. Let's just crush it all the way. Now we, we see very clearly the separation between the white and the black. It's just a hard line and as soon as we disable that levels effect again, we get the smooth fall off that gives us that lovely stretching. And that will segue us nicely back to the storm clouds. So now we will rejoin those of us who skipped ahead in our, uh, our cloud comp. 
Okay, so I plopped my photo in my comp and I'm going to apply the the displacement map effect. Blink. And you might have noticed a little bit of a, a little bit of movement there because we already have some default values of 5 showing up. I'm going to switch these values to luminance, these drop downs because we want to we want to read the dark and the light pixels of the image to refer to when transforming the individual pixels when shifting them horizontally and vertically. And this drop down we only have one option, which is to refer to itself. This layer will refer to itself in its own luminance um, information. And we are only using the source, we don't have any effects applied that would be relevant here. For those who watch the demonstration with the grid, you will know that you'll notice that the gradual fall off between values is going to be our best friend in getting a nice stretching, morphing shape without breaking and having nasty hard edges. Now let's just click stuff and shift it around. You'll see right away that there is something very interesting going on here. And all of a sudden our photo looks more like a 3D object or 3D mesh. And if we drag it really far to one side or the other, the values can stretch to the point where it just looks like crap and it's, there, there's nothing here anymore. So you can break this effect, or at least break the illusion. We're not breaking the effect itself, but we're definitely breaking the believability that this is an object. It starts to look like just some fever dream out of androids dreaming of electric sheep or something. There is a sweet spot where this actually still maintains some level of visual believability. So I'm going to now get into the fun part, which is animating these values. Oh yeah, let's play with the vertical value too, just to see what that does. It helps that our photo is larger than the comp, so we're able to pull in information from outside of the frame. Let's just reset these to zero. All right, this is where the fun begins. Let's just set a keyframe at the beginning with our vertical displacement set to like negative 28, why not? Just mark that as a keyframe. Go to the end here, and let's just do the inverse of that, positive 28. And we can just scrub along here and see that there is some interesting movement going on. So we're starting here and doing that. I think I want to invert this. We're, we're going to start with uh, the negative, or end with the negative, begin with the positive. And it's still like any other layer in After Effects, you can animate whatever parameters you want. So I'm going to go ahead and take our scale and increase that through the comp as well. So we get a little bit of a, a push in as well as the displacement. And we're starting to see the really cool effects here because it's no longer a boring zoom in on a photo, but we're getting kind of a false parallax going on. You see the difference if I turn off the displacement. We're just zooming in on a photo, no big deal. But as soon as you get that displacement back on, we're like flying into the photo. And you can push these values a little bit more extreme. Let's go ahead and crank that displacement a bit more. Oop. There we go. And you can get creative with all sorts of things at this point. Um, but one more thing I would like to do is, is walk you through a little bit of the more detailed version of this that I created um, on my own that has a few more little things thrown in there to make it a bit more interesting and more um, more detailed. Here's the one we just created, which is nice, but this one has a bit more uh, bit more action, noticeably in the center. So you might have noticed my my uh, my layers down here in the bottom. I have a number of effects. Um, I did a little bit of animation on the exposure just so it varied a little bit. It got a tiny bit lighter, a tiny bit darker over the course of the runtime. It may not even be noticeable. Here's the main player here is the liquify effect. Um, let's, let's redo this. I'll just demonstrate how I did it. This I ripped straight from an old uh, Andrew Kramer video copilot tutorial back in the day that I remembered. It's like 10 years old by now, probably. But I just grabbed one of these like twirly dudes, held command or control on windows and scaled up my brush. And you just like click and hold for a second. And then you can keyframe that distortion. So it's 100% of what you just did. Let's add a keyframe here. And at the beginning, let's go drag that value to zero. So you can see that it, the twist happens during the animation. So yeah, you can see it swirling. It's kind of exaggerated in this in this instance. Let me just uh, erase that one and go with my 
my prettier version from earlier. So there, there are a couple of little twirls and pinches and pulls going on around, just so not all of the movement is dictated by the vertical displacement. Oh, and here's something interesting I did. I actually duplicated the photo and blurred it out, and I have the blurred version is what is being referred to by the displacement effect. Why would I have done that? Well, it's the same reason that with the grid, I liked having a smooth gradient with smooth fall off from dark to light. With our, uh, our dank version here, <laughs> with our quick version, you might have noticed some weird little uh, artifacts going on in these, these corners and areas that have very high contrast edges. That sometimes those end up having little, they're, they're just strange artifacts, kind of stringy looking things. And if you're able to kind of smooth that out, by blurring the whole thing and just using the blurred photo as your displacement reference, it tends to smooth out some of those otherwise jaggy and uh, stringy looking edges. And I thought that the effect was rather rather nice overall. And let's, uh, let's see what it looks like if I turn the blur off versus on. It's just a subtle difference. Uh, one other thing. YouTube compression will eat this alive, but the uh, let's zoom in enough that maybe you can see that the grain from the original photo, because it's a very noisy, low quality phone picture from 2015 or something, all these dots of grain are not changing and they're just moving with the cloud as it goes, which makes it look kind of silly. It makes it look more like a, well, it, it just looks like a photograph moving through the air rather than an actual cloud. It has a strange distorting quality to it. And so I added a, a, a little noise filter over the top to mask that a little bit and obviously this looks exaggerated you know you zoom back out and it's sort of a film grain look anyway i hope this sparks some fun ideas for ways to use the uh, displacement effect and if it never comes in handy in your life at least you'll know how to make some pretty cool looking clouds from a still photo and that's a, that's kind of a fun party trick depending on who your friends are what kind of parties you're going to Clearly, I go to the coolest parties. A little sneak peek into the future here. Uh, you may have noticed that there is a time displacement effect that pops up when you type in displacement. And that is a, a very similar effect. It also references image attributes from your comp, but instead of displacing things spatially, moving pixels around the frame, it's displacing that pixel through time. So what did that pixel look like three frames ago, five frames ago? Maybe I'll throw up a little example here of a, of a clip made using time displacement. It's kind of a, it, it's an effect that you probably have seen used in a music video or something. Anyway, displacement is powerful stuff and it's, uh, this is what computers are good for.